You know, I do think this new, it's, it's uncharted territory, as you say. Uh, Mario and Ron are both not really active participants, which means the Fenway Sports Group has uh, a lot to consider, and that includes guys in the front office. I'm sure Brian Burke is not going to be part of their plans. And if he isn't, I wonder about Ron Hextall. And if he, you know, they may want their own people. Before they do anything else, they're going to trust their own people if they believe these two guys aren't the guys to take the next step here. And right. I'm not sure what the answer is. So, you know, if, well, it, it, but I think if, it, if they're coming in new slate, they're going to want their people to make these key decisions because these are key decisions. Well, yeah, and Hextall didn't do enough, and I know it was in a short amount of time, but he wouldn't have knocked me off my feet if I was the Fenway group. The big contract he gave out last offseason was to Brock McGinn, and the guy took the penalty that put the Rangers on the power play to win the game. So that's not a good, I mean, a long-term deal, too, that you really can't get out of. He gave Carter, an old man, that contract See, extension like that midseason. One. At first yeah, I'm, I, not, at, I'm not really impressed. No, and the Jeff Carter one doesn't make sense if you weren't sure. I thought that contract was a sign that they had some deals in place or that they had come to some sort of an agreement well, with some of these guys. But because they haven't now and because they all may leave, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, and look, I thought reading between the lines today, the tea leaves from the guys who talked, I thought Malkin almost was pleading with the Penguins to make them a fair deal. Like he was trying to get the message out through the media, hey, I really do want to stay here. Just give me an offer that's close. Uh, I thought Rust sounded like a guy who was saying, I already played on a hometown discount. You were paying me three and a half million. That's way under market value. So I'm not going to take another one. And I thought Latang, you know, before this day started, Bob, I thought he was the one that was gone for sure. But when he said, look, I've been talking to Hextall. I don't want to get into my contract negotiations. It made me feel like maybe they're really trying with Chris Latang more than they are the other guys. Like they've made him their number one priority. That's how I took that today. I still ultimately don't think he'll be back here. But it seems to me like they're putting the full court press on Chris Letang right now. We're going to take a break. We have a lot to get into, including the PGA Championship. That's right. It's this week. And it's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Phil Mickelson will not be there. I'll talk to Andrew about that. I'm sure you could bet some stuff on FanDuel. We'll get all that covered. We'll also talk about the Pirates who put up another goose egg, although they increased their hit total for the third day in a row. It's now up to four in one game. <laughs> we'll talk about that and more as we continue. It's live right here. The Ireland Contracting Natalie Sports Call-Up. It's for CW.